In this tutorial, we'll learn about exporting and importing information. You can export information from your project to share with another person or import a project of theirs. In addition, we can use Excel or CSV files to import large amounts of information for tanks, lines, or panels. Let's start by importing a simple project. Click the Import button on the toolbar, then select Project from the menu. Here I see a list of projects to choose from. I'm going to select the site project and click OK. My project opens up in Chroma Trace. I see my tab with the simple pipe project name on it. And it has three lines in it, oil line 1.1, oil line 2.2, and oil line 3.3. If I look on the Home tab, I'll see that my simple pipe project does not appear in my recent projects list. The imported project must be saved to become permanent. I'm going to go back into my imported simple pipe project and click the Save tool. You have to save the imported information so it will be saved in your project. Let's close this project out and look at exporting one of our projects. Let's open up this crude wash line project and now you'll see that we have our export button available. We can click the export button and choose project. The name of our project automatically populates in our Save As box. Click the Save button and that's it, you're done. Now you can save your exported CTCX file with another user. There are several time-saving features in Chroma Trace for populating lines, tanks, and panels. There are copy commands and global copy commands, and the import command allows you to import lines from Excel or CSV files. Let's take a look at importing some lines into our existing project. Choose Import and then I'm going to choose lines. You'll notice that my files are filtered on the CTCX extension. Since I need an Excel file, I'm going to change this to all files. I'm going to import this pipe import file. Then click the open button. The import screen provides several functions to help you. The first thing you'll see is an ignore first row checkbox. If you have column headings in your file, check this box. From this drop-down, I'll choose the matching field for each of my columns. The first column is going to be the name of the line. In the second column, I have some area information here. So I'm going to look for my miscellaneous area field and select that. I'll move on to my next drop-down. I'll select the section number from the line options. Select the next column drop-down, which is the diameter. I'm going to put my sequence number in my miscellaneous reference number. Choose the drop down for insulation type. I'll select type from the pipe insulation section. And you'll notice all of the fields in my column are highlighted in red. That indicates that there's some kind of a problem with the data here. I'm going to have to correct my entries or else change my column. I'm going to assign this to a different column type. Let's click OK to close out the error message. Back to my drop down to select a different field here. This is actually the size of my insulation thickness. Now we can move on to our next column for pipe schedule. Select the schedule option from the pipe insulation section. Next we'll set up our pipe length field. Select length from the pipe insulation section. Now I have a single error in this field, you'll see that this one field is highlighted. And this is a new and fix this. And continue on assigning my... The next field is a drawing ID number. This is an optional field. We'll include it. It's good to have as much information as possible. Select drawing number from the miscellaneous section and temperature assignments here. This is the max on
period. From my area classification, I'll choose class. And also from my area classification, I'm going to choose division. Here's my vol. Classification Let's Click OK. And you'll see that quickly. 